Hi, this is Quant Namat. Welcome to my channel. So Trading just recently announced support of arrays in Pinescript and this is a pretty big deal. Community waited for that for quite a lot of time. And um, in this video I will show you an example of how you can uh, use uh, uh, arrays in your indicators. So if you want uh, to learn Pinescript deeper, please uh, check out uh, my Pinescript programming course. You can find link in description. So let's look at a strategy I have on my chart. I created this strategy quite some time ago when there wasn't uh, support of arrays in Pinescape. And the idea of this um, indicator is pretty basic. So I have like um, uh, pivots here, pivots points, and I just want to calculate like average of last 25 pivot points. And um, idea is very simple, but implementation is not so simple. Uh, because there is no arrays, you have to do quite a lot of hacks to uh, implement it. So first of all, I kind of simulate arrays only for like this um, uh, kind of uh, for this task, and it looks really ugly in the code. So basically, I create like like a variable for every element of, of an array, and after that, you need to when you want to like insert new element to your array. You have to do this uh, weird stuff as well when you just kind of manually shift it and reassign every variable. So it looks really bad. And when you want to calculate like average of of like uh, like last like I don't know x elements, uh, you have to do this kind of weird stuff as well. And like point is that it took me like more than 100 lines to develop uh, this strategy, but like with the race. Uh, you can do this like in 10 or 20 lines easily. So let's try to um, to implement the same kind of logic using arrays and just compare how easier it is to uh, use arrays in this case. So first of all, we need to define our um, our arrays. I will use one array for pivot highs, one array for pivot lows. And to define an array, you can use um, array dot new float and after that in brackets you specify you know like initial length of your array so for 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 in the beginning it will be empty for me and i will use the same um syntax to create like low um low arrays for for pivot lows that's it so now we have our arrays created so now let's add new elements to our array so every time we see like new pivot point we will add new element to our array. So what I will do, I will use not a name of um, SWX. I think this is our pivot point. And when um, this is true, so then we basically see a like, new uh, pivot point. We will use array uh, dot on uh, shift, uh, um, on shift um, function. And after that, we will, use, we will add our element to our array. So how this array dot on shift um, function works. So basically it will kind of add new element to the beginning of array and all other elements will be kind of shifted to the right. So the same will do for um, for pivot lows. Um, I just need to change here to L and here to L as well. And here as well. So that's it for adding. Uh, new elements to our arrays. So now our arrays are functional. So the last thing we have to do is we need to kind of compute our average uh, pivot low and pivot high levels. So let's do that. It's quite easy as well. So first of all, I will check that we have enough uh, size uh, in our arrays. So if our size of our array is um, more than average um, length, I want to compute. So basically this is, I have this as an input variable. So for how many like uh, elements I want to compute average. So if uh, like we have enough uh, elements in our array, I will compute that as um, I will use array um, average function. And here I need to specify an array I want to add. And I want just to compute uh, uh, like average of the first like 25 basically uh, elements. So I will use another function array slice to get only like the first 25 elements of our array. So I will use um, eight. Uh, so for, for low, I need to use L and from uh, zero element to uh, 
I will use, I will have to get average length uh, number of elements. So that's basically it. And in all other cases, I will return not available as my level and the same for uh, high. And I will put like two here just to distinguish between my old values. So let's do this for L, average L. Here is, um, okay, I, I screw it up a bit. So here is L and here is H. Here is H as well. So that's basically it. Now we have another pivot, low and pivot high levels. Now we can plot it to see if it works, if it has the same values and basically if it works the same way. So let's just um, edit and I will use, I don't know, like black, for black like lines to find out if it works the same way. Now let's just save it and see if it works. So as you can see, we have exactly the same lines. So it works the same way, but we saved so many space. Let me just delete like all the code I used for a previous uh, version and you'll see how small it is now and it's much flexible because like there I had this code uh, but the, the one had this code only for max 25 like elements if you want to use more you need to add like more of these variables more and like you can you need to edit everything here at more and more code and here this is really a nightmare to Kind of support it to, de to develop it further but with arrays it's just so much easier so as you can see it's pretty nice uh, feature and you can use to simplify your existing indicators or create much more complicated indicator with arrays and i just this is just an example because like arrays it's are pretty complicated and you have quite a lot of stuff so if you go to um, you know like pine script reference and just type you know array you will see that you you have here like i don't know like 30 35 uh, different functions so this topic is pretty big and i need probably to create a few more videos explaining other aspects of arrays but just start looking at them they're very interesting and i think it can make your life much better when coding in pinescript i think that's all for this video thank you for watching bye